This boat just rocked up. Let's go check it out. I yelled out to the owner. Greetings! I'm, my name's Peter. Hi Peter. Uh, yeah, Matt, nice to meet you. Hey Matt, how you going buddy? Come Can I uh, permission to come aboard and check out this magnificent boat? Pop up, pop up. Excellent, excellent. All right. Uh -huh. It's a Warham, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, Warham Pahi. So um, they got quite a few designs, the um, Warhams over the years, but um, this is one of their classic Polynesian inspired designs. All right, do you mind doing a, a tour around? Not at all, no, no, yeah. All right. We'll start right here, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah, let's so, check it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, fundamental principles to be looking down the hull is um, it's a really long, narrow hull. So um, they're inspired by the Polynesian double voyaging canoes that um, basically you know, colonized the entire Pacific during the Polynesian era or the height of the Polynesian era. So all of, all of these um, beams that you see here that hold the two canoes together, they're lashed on with, um, with lashings. And the idea, of, um, the idea of that is it maintains uh, some flexibility in the overall structure. And the key thing there is that if you've got a bit of flexibility, the hard points uh, where the connections are between the canoes and the cross beams um, uh, aren't under so much stress or the shock loads associated with being at sea. Um, so you're much less likely to crack. So it's like a shock absorber. It's kind of like a shock absorber and a bit of suspension. You've got this kind of diagonal thing going on where one side the other. It's, um, it also makes a really smooth and forgiving ride. So um, the hulls are really narrow and deep Vs. And um, so the combination of the, the double end, you know, the pointed double ended canoe, deep V, which um, is, you know, like more forgiving and the buoyancy increases slowly compared to a flat bottom yeah. hull. Uh, and that, with the suspension effect of the um, flexible lashings, means that it's a really, really smooth ride in a seaway, you know, so... Uh, and um, the... Here we go, there's Brian! Brian! Come here, board. Cool. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. Brian's coming aboard too, checking out the Warham as well. So everything is ropes, right? Ropes yeah, and so, wood and yeah, um, so, glass on yeah, fly. Wooden construction. Um, there's a, a, a sheet of uh, glass cloth over the top of it, which is epoxy glass over the top of it. Um, and that's really just to protect it from the sun and, and to waterproof it. And of course, a two-pack paint on top. Two-pack paint on top. Okay. But yeah, so it's not just the main construction, which is the, the beams lashed on. Um, you also see that the hull is um, lashed to the rig by means of uh, dead eyes and lanyards, which is kind of a traditional way of holding a rig up. It means you don't need any heavy stainless fittings and also as with the connections between the beams and the hulls it can all be repaired just with a piece of rope so um, with relatively moderate skills you can either build or rig um, and then once you've got this boat to see whether you can actually maintain it with really very basic carpentry skills and um, and rigging skills uh, and you know really just a knife and a few bits and pieces so just kind of rewinding a little bit from you know like the obvious stuff the, the whole idea was inspired by you know, the, the early Polynesians who obviously colonised the whole Pacific on double hull voyaging canoes that were lashed together with coconut fibre rope and just made out of really simple materials. But they were much smaller, they were like 20 feet, weren't no, they? No, some of them were quite big. You know, really? so, yeah, some of the, the, the big voyaging canoes would take, um, you know, families, tribal parties from one island group to another. They, you know, they went over the whole Pacific like that. So, oh, okay. so you know, the idea, when James Warren was studying, you know, that back when he was, you know, a, a young man, 70 something years ago um, you know his his belief was that the Polynesians had a, a more sustainable approach and um, something that um, would enable them to do a particular kind of navigation which the Europeans really hadn't even you know stumbled across and you know the Europeans were building these huge heavy warships cutting down acres and acres and acres of old growth forest and mining coal and iron ore to make these domineering machines that they went all over the world raping and pillaging with and the Polynesians at the same time were tiptoeing around the Pacific in a really sustainable way. The whole idea was to make it accessible um, for using kind of modern technology in terms of um, you know plywood and epoxy and that sort of thing but, but adhering to those old principles of seaworthiness and, and sea keep good you know si kindly sea keeping qualities. So. Like one aspect of the design that you'll see when you're looking at the boat from a distance um, is that keeps them safe and seaworthy is they're quite low in the water you know the the, um, the freeboard compared to a modern multi-hull design is much lower so the whole idea of that is to reduce windage um, and also just the profile in the water 
in terms of shock absorbing, like these narrow pointed low parts here that you're looking at down here, a wave will wash over that and then it will wash through this net and then it will wash through these slats and so the energy is being progressively absorbed. So by the time the energy of a wave gets back to where the crew or the family are sheltering, most of it has gone. And um, so it's about shock absorbing through the suspension of the lashings, um, reducing the impact of shock loads in the first place by having not too many hard surfaces. In fact, the purists in the Warren world would say that these pods that we've built here uh, are not even pure Warren because you know the original design was all about tents and flush decks and all the rest of it. But you know we live in the UK. Brian, you want to demonstrate by laying seductively over the top? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about this? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Anyway, we, we spend a lot of our time in Northern Europe and, um, you know, Ireland, Scotland, North, Northern England. Well, you did have a family, of a big family. Yeah. Four we, kids, yeah, right? Yeah, we've got four kids. That's so why, you had to have... That's why we went for four cabin version. Um, but, um, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to afford to get a boat that could fit our whole family um, uh, if we'd been going for a different kind of design. They're relatively cheap to build and, and uh, relatively cheap to run. So. Um, so just going back to another aspect of the design that really keeps it safe and seaworthy is you'll see that there's two masts here. Um, so the rig is split into two masts rather than um, one high mast. And um, what's great about that for when you're you know, working with multi-hulls is that actually it keeps the whole thing lower. So that means that you're less worried about stability because the profile of the rig is lower to start with also makes it much more manageable for a shorthanded crew like Suzanne and I, you know, run this boat with just two of us. So each of these sails is half the size of one big sail. So that makes a huge difference in terms of the amount of handling. Um, they've also got these amazing, um, this is a, a Warren wing sail, so it's actually loose footed with no booms, these gaffs which go up. So the aspect of each sail um, is quite high, but the sails themselves are relatively low compared to one big sail. So it's actually quite a modern sail plan but with no booms, so everything's done on um, on uh, two main sheets, effectively, that um, alter the uh, twist and the angle of incidence, the angle of attack and all that stuff. But um, yeah, and there's no turbulence at the mast because the sails are zipped around the mast, so there's no cars or complicated tracks or um, anything to go wrong there, really. It's just a, a smooth wing sail that um, that you create three slots between these two sails and the and the jibs up here, and then um, and then away you go. It's quite an efficient rig. Uh, Master okay. Hollow Cedar people, manufactured from four individual planks. <laughs> so what's the weight of this? Um, we're, we're grossing about 12, which is, which is the boat with everything fill, filled up. And um, it's 52 feet? 50, uh, this one's a stretch, it's 53 feet, but it okay. should be 52, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so 12 ton, what's it supposed to be? Uh, without it, these it, tops? Uh, well, it, well it net, it, it's net weight without all the fluids and fuel and water and everything on board and without all the people and kit is nine tons. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we added about 750 kilos putting on hard tops here and here. Um, but, um, so we've taken a little bit of hit on speed on that. Um, but uh, she still sails perfectly well for us. And, and what speeds are we talking about? Regularly hit 10, 12 knots. Um, and uh, I mean, we've, we've surfed down waves at up to 18, 19. Um, but we base our cruising around going places slowly and safely rather than the band trying to get there as quickly as possible. So when I was dinging up, I noticed that the engines are actually in pods or in the cells that lift. Yeah, so part of the concept um, with Warrens is that they're, you know, they're efficient sailing machines and that um, the motor aspect, the motoring aspect, which is really important safety aspect for cruisers, you know, you know, all of us know that if you're caught out in a tidal estuary and the wind's gone and the tide's against you and you're trying to get in somewhere, you've got to have efficient engines. Um, coming in and out of these reefs, you know, you, you suddenly find yourself being set towards a bit of coral or something like that. You don't fanny about trying to sail yourself out of trouble in that situation. You've got lives at risk, you turn the engines on. So, Warham's solution to that was to traditionally was to mount outboards and have um, outboards on little sleds that could come out of the water and then lift the props out. Um, but um, with these slightly bigger ones and longer distance cruising like we're doing, um, we much prefer to have inboard diesel. So the way that happens is like everything else on Warrams, it's all uh, suspended uh, on flexible joints. So the, there's two beams that run through here that are basically box beams and they're hinged on that beam and hinged on that beam. Uh, and the engines are dropped into these box beams. Uh, so they kind of flex with the boat. So as with um, 
as with all things warham, everything happens with a piece of uh, spring and a block and tackle. So to drop the props in the water, you literally just pop that out of his jammer there, and then in goes the prop. When the props are out of the water, they're not dragging, so that's a much more efficient sailing thing. You haven't got drag, and also um, uh, there's no danger of them catching on a fishing pot or hitting something when you're at sea. So they're, you know, they're really, really quick to deploy, but also um, out of the water when you don't want them in the water. So that's great, and also it means you've got no electrolysis problems or anything like that. We've got no metal parts touching the sea at all. So, um, so uh, electrolysis is just not a thing we have to worry about. Uh, this is another quite fun bit in Warham, classic Warham design. So the um, so the, the dinghy, um, you know, rather than having davits, the whole aft deck goes down. It becomes a... Uh, yeah, well, me down. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, Bye-bye, uh, Brian. Uh, <laughs> Want a shower? Yeah, again, uh, you know, classic Warren. It's just hinged, block and tackle, super simple. So the when the deck's up like that, um, it's perfectly safe to walk on. It's like the coolest swim platform. Uh, and, and it's an amazing swim platform. So you just drop it in like that. The dinghy goes down and just gives into the water. People can see. Yeah, last few things to look at out here really are um, obviously quite big solar panels. So we're um, generating as much of our electricity as we can from renewables. Uh, we've got a drop-down water generator as well, so that um, that takes care of our nighttime uh, consumption when we're at sea. And um, and uh, yeah, I mean we just try and keep it as simple as possible. The whole idea when we're out sailing, as far as I'm concerned, is to not be spending too much time worrying about things breaking. Um, and if things do break, to have the kind of technology on board that is just so easy to fix and you know appropriate that we don't have to worry about even a caveman can do it people you know the drill on my vlog right. okay let's just have a um, look inside yeah we had uh, uh, we built this pod because uh we're um you know english and it gets cold and wet in england in the winter and we spend a lot of time in ireland and scotland surfing and stuff so uh, surfing you had a whole family of surfers you were saying before yeah i mean the whole idea for us at the beginning was to go um combine the things that we love doing which is sailing and surfing and go looking for waves um by boat and the most appropriate machine for that as far as we we're concerned was to copy what the polynesians did because they were the people that started surfing and um, and uh, if they were finding waves by tiptoeing around the Pacific on double hull voyaging canoes, well, maybe we could too. That was the idea. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, so that's you, kind of what we've been doing. You ought to have filmed it. It would have been a way more interesting vlog than mine, people. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> funnily enough, actually, uh, we have ended up making a bit of a film. So there is, um, yeah, there is a film coming out um, sometime in the next few months. Actually, we've been filming for the last five years. So. All right, all right. So, well, uh, can you can you give us, us a little uh, a little sneak preview? Oh, a little, little <laughs> what, what's it about? Is it about your family surfing? It, or what's well, it about? yeah, it started off as an adventure story. Um, a friend lent me a book about um, discovering. Uh, uh, some islands in the middle of the Atlantic uh, a long time ago as a Victorian uh, journal of someone who went off looking for treasure actually for Spanish gold um, but on the way they've written this journal account of it and they were describing this wave breaking in the middle of the Atlantic um, and when we were reading it we were reading it as a treasure hunt story but when we were reading it we were both going wow look at that there's a wave breaking out there in Victorian times let's go looking for it and, um, and it was described as this cavern with light shining through and you know for surfers We're, being in the cavern is mm. being in the pit in the tunnel sounds dreamy yeah. <laughs> so anyway so we started making this film and then uh we were very lucky that a producer heard about it through one of um the professional surfers that we were working with and um she came along and said right let's turn this into a proper film so that's coming out quite soon we're quite excited about it all right well i'm, I'm gonna check that out we'll um i'll put all the description uh, what, cool, yeah, put all the links and whatever savage waters savage waters yeah, I, might, yeah. I, I might be able to show you a preview what do you think of the warren i love it i think it's a great simple boat simple boat for a simple sailor like myself in fact Look, if the Kickstarter campaign failed, I reckon I would have built uh, a, um, well, I was talking about building a warham out of bamboo or a catamaran out of bamboo. So we would have done something crazy like that. But thankfully, we are not on that course. Although, well, you know, you never know. It's a very romantic thing, thinking about these simple things and, you know, just giving it a go. Uh, so... Warren, put in your comments what you think. Look, I th as I said, I think it's uh, good. I'm going to employ some of the 
Look, I'm going to do Dyneema again um, on the Mumby, and I'm going to have cymbals and lashings. I'm going to try and minimise on stainless steel. I don't know uh, if you realise this, people, but the absolute rubbish we are getting, the stainless steel quality is, like, woeful. I mean, the only good stainless steel was in the 70s and 80s when they actually did it right. Now they've engineered it to put just enough chromium and other, uh, other elements into it just to make it look good for three weeks and then it's just kaput. So I think we either all got to yell out and say enough is enough, let's get some reputable manufacturer out there to make good stainless steel, but we're going to have to pay for it, we're going to have to pay four or five times as much or whatever it is and there's an industry right there because I've, I've had enough. I mean literally uh, screws or um, bolts or anything rust within three weeks. So anyway, I, I shouldn't harp on about this. So um, yeah, I think the Warren's good. Uh, if if you're keen on uh, looking at the Warren, there's a very attractive young lady uh, named Kiana Weltsian. Uh, look her up. Uh, she um, reinvigorated a uh, 1974 Warren 41. And uh, I think I sent her a message and say, hey, why don't you come on the Mumby? Uh, she's yet to get back to me, people. Maybe you can write a few comments on my behalf. It's better for you to say, hey, check out this guy. He's not too bad. Comments like, he's a bit crazy, but you'll never starve. You know, put in a good word. Not for a relationship, don't get me wrong. Just to have some pretty capable females on the boat that will make the vlog better. Just an idea, people. Uh, so check her out. Um, she basically revamped a very old boat and is solo sailing now so good on her now i was thinking you know how um matt was telling us about the swishiness of it you know it's it's toughness it's its ability to absorb punishment um arises because of the fact that it actually moves maybe the lagoon the designer was thinking say let's let's adopt that for the lagoons you know, so it's swishy, swishy. The trouble is they've got, you know, joinery and cabinet wear everywhere that it sort of vibrates loose and, you know, goes from the front to the back by the end of your journey. So it maybe doesn't work. Even the bulkheads move around. Yeah, so perhaps it's not adaptable to lagoon boats. So maybe they need to scrap that idea. But with the warren, I think that's a great idea with the ropes. It's just magnificent. So good on you. Write some comments, tell us what you think, and I'll see you next week.